Shalom, Akim. We the brothers from the SF Bay Area camp coming at you with another interesting lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashima Shah. Blessed with another week to teach this beautiful word. First and foremost, we want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who taught us this truth. Salutations to all you Akim through the four corners of the earth that's bringing out this word and sincerity in the truth. And Shalom to all you believers that believe on this word and sincerity in the truth. Shalom to you. You know, I'm the brother Menachizak and I got with me. I'm the brother Shamar. You know, and through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shmau Shai, we blessed with another week to teach this beautiful word. And we're going to keep the sin going that we have when we start the interest and lessons off with. We one day closer to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai's return on the earth. And we one day closer to our enemy Esau, Edom, the so-called white man's downfall. You know, and as Apostle Tahar deemed this year, the, the, the theme of this year is the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And Lord's will that prophecy be fulfilled this year, you know, that all hell break loose and the Most High bring in Jacob's trouble, which is going to usher in Esau coming with that wrath. And eventually it's going to usher in the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, bringing Esau's judgment, bringing this devil down, you know. But, you know, we in the time of the um, Pesach. Today is the day of the Pesach at sunset, which the Pesach, which is the Passover, that marks the beginning of the new year, according to the uh Bible, the new year starts in the spring. So we're in the time of life being put back on the earth, which is the springtime. So, you know, the Lord gave us a great deliverance during the ancient times through the prophet Moses and his brother Aaron. He raised up Moses to what? Uh, to be a prophet um, and to basically tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Because what happened? The Lord, um, his children, the Israelites, which were us in the reincarnation, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, we were crying unto the Lord. And the Lord eventually heard our cries and raised up a deliverer, which was Moses. So we in the times now of uh, ancient Egypt um, all over again, which is modern day America. And what are we doing as the men of the Lord? We're crying unto the Lord to bring the modern day Pharaoh, which is Esau, eat him down, and the Lord is hearing our cries. So we're just gonna get scriptures, Lord's will, to just bring the point home. Oh, you have some? Yeah, I have some. You got it right? Uh, this is Jeremiah chapter 16. Let me see if I want to start with start at it. You probably can start at 14. Yeah, Jeremiah 16 and 14. Uh, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, because that deliverance that the Heavenly Father gave us in the ancient world was a great deliverance and that deliverance is still talked about to this very day. They have movies that they've created. Um, you know, the best one I can think of is the um, the Disney cartoon, the, uh, the Prince of Egypt. Yeah. You know, you had other ones, the one with Charles and Heston, the Ten Commandments, different um, you know, reenactments of, of that great deliverance and it's still talked about to this day because what the Heavenly Father did for us had never been done at that time on the earth. Yeah. He took down the greatest empire at that time, which is Pharaoh. He took his empire down and smote him with, what, 10 plagues, wonders, you know? Yeah, and that's what today is about, you know, the facade, about remembering that uh, that deliverance, you know, and us doing the bitter, um, the bitter herbs and everything else. Yeah, the bitter herbs represents the, um, the, the bitterness of the captivity because it was, it was a horrible captivity at that time and we cried unto the Lord and the Lord heard us. So the same thing is happening right now in the modern day times where the elect are crying unto the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shai, to deliver us, to take this man Esau, eat him down. This is a bitter captivity and the Lord is hearing our cries. That's why you see things happening throughout the earth. Yep. What's that uh, revelation? He told the angel, don't hurt the earth nor the seeds. We have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead. Mm -hmm. So the elect are being sealed, which is what? Bringing forth the downfall of Esau, eat him. You know, got it out. And just like back then, it was a great deliverance. Now it's going to be another new. Um, this is going to be the new great deliverance that's going to be spoken of. Like the brother was saying, you had all type of movies and different things that that recreate that deliverance that we went through. And then it's going to be a, the new deliverance that's getting ready to take place. It's going to be spoken of just like the old one is. Yeah, it's going to be um, the new deliverance is going to um, replace the old one because this deliverance is going to outweigh that deliverance because this deliverance is going to be worldwide. Mm -hmm. The Lord said he's going to send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of heaven from one end of heaven to the other, meaning the whole planet Earth is going to see the deliverance of the elect. Yahweh Shai, behold, he coming with clouds, the clouds of the chariots. He's going to beam up the elect inside the uh, chariots of Israel. 
with the world calls UFOs, UAPs, uh, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, you know, we're going up. And the whole world is going to see that. So that new deliverance is going to outweigh the old deliverance, which the old deliverance was very, um, it was a very spectacular uh, moment in history because when we left out of Egypt, all the nations heard of that great deliverance and they feared because they knew the power that hate of iniquity was with us, you know? Mm -hmm. Just that we had went off as a nation that's pro was prophesying. He ultimately rose up those nations to rule over us. But they knew that great deliverance. Pharaoh got smoked with the plagues. Pharaoh, uh, the firstborn of everything, the cattle and the firstborn, got put to death, you know? They heard of that. And they, they feared. Like, what great power is with these people, you know? So that same power in these times is fighting for the elect. Got it, not? Yep. It says, uh, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Yeah, from the land of the north, right here, over here in, in America, the northern hemisphere, right over here in America, Babylon the Great, the great deliverance is going to take place. You got it out. And from all the lands whither he have driven them. And not just in America, throughout the whole planet Earth, wherever the nation of Israel has been driven out and scattered, the Lord is going to gather his elect and it's going to be te uh, televised. You know, we're living in the time of, uh, of cell phones, camera phones. So you're going to see the deliverance, you know? You got it out. I think that was it. Yeah, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Yeah, so we going back to the homeland that we were kicked out of eventually for not keeping the commandments. This time we're going back to that land after it's nuked off the earth, of course, with them because in World War Three, when once that takes place, the land of Israel is going to be nuked because you have a bastard in our land, which is Esau, Edom, Amalek, which they don't belong in that land, and you, which you have Ishmael over there. You know, the Palestinians, they fighting over a land that doesn't belong to either one of them. So that land is going to be nuked via World War III. And after the fire dies down, we're going to return back to that land. It's going to be a land flowing with milk and honey. And not only that land, the whole planet Earth. It's just that America will be the only thing left as an example. This land will never be inhabited once again once the fire dies down in America. It's going to be left as a, a memorial on what happens when you live your life and rule a kingdom in complete wickedness. So the main point I'm getting this to is the reason why the Lord break, brought that great deliverance is because he heard the cries of the people. And that same thing is happening now. So, so I'm going to get this. Now, this is, a, this is a scripture when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, revealed himself unto Moses. And I'm going to just run through it real quick. It's Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he held, and he had led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of the Most High, even Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. So he was seeing the uh, first miracle of the of Yahweh right there. He actually seen a, a bush on fire, but the bush was not consumed, meaning the Heavenly Father's presence was in that bush via the angel. It was a miracle. So the bush was on fire, but not burning up, you know? So it says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. So you got a picture, picture like something is on fire. You see the literally see the fire engulfing something, but it's not melting. You don't, you know, you don't smell no smoke. So that's a miracle. That's that's the, the angel came down and manipulated the elements to Moses to show the Heavenly Father's great power. And it says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, the Most High called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. So he's he's actually in the presence of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, via the angel. And now it says, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon the Most High. You know, so he's seen the glory of the Father. That's powerful, you know. It says, and the Lord said, I have surely, that's the point I wanted to get to. 
And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cries by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So the heavenly father heard our cries. Why? Because we were crying unto the Lord, you know? Yeah. Jake was catching hell. Yeah. The same thing is happening to the, in today's time. It says, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt, out of the hand of the Egyptians, and bring them out of that land unto a good land, a large land. It says, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And it says, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. So basically the Lord was saying, look, I come to deliver the children of Israel because I've heard their cries. Yep. Just like we um sign and crying now, mm -hmm. you know, like it says in Ezekiel 9 and 4. Yep. You know, sign and crying for all the abominations and everything else that, you know, we go through and have to deal with in this society. Now, let me get a priest of Isaiah 62. Yeah, so that's the point of the lesson. Cry unto the Lord. The Lord wants us to cry unto him because he's hearing our prayer, our cries. Yep. And eventually that deli that great deliverance, the second deliverance is coming. Yeah, that's why you see everything being sped up. You know, we've been signing and crying and the word being, being spread by us pushing the word. This is only doing what? Speeding up the downfall of this place and, and our deliverance. Yep. Now here it is. Isaiah 62 and 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Yeah, we're we're the watchmen. You know, we watch to see what's going on and we warn the people, you know. It says, we shall never hold their peace day nor night. Yeah, and that's, that's what we do. We don't hold our peace day nor night. You got the internet because you see the word going out pretty much 24-7. It says, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence mm -hmm. and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yeah, we're supposed to not keep silence and give him no rest. That's why you're supposed to constantly be crying to the Heavenly Father, praying for the hastening the day, really praying for the Lord to deliver us, you know, hastening that time. Yeah, like he said, when we read in Exodus 3, he told Moses, I'm the God of thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What was the promise that he made Abraham? He was gonna make his nation. Uh, he was gonna choose uh, uh, the, the promise. Uh, the chosen people were gonna come out of his line, and it came through Abraham. And it went to Isaac and through Jacob. He was gonna make us a nation of what kings and priests, rulers. Mm -hmm. So, like the scriptures say, "Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom." This is all leading up to the kingdom. So, before we get the kingdom, we had to go through the different trials and tribulations of falling as a people, being brought low. You know, which brought forth the fear of the Lord, being brought to the brink of a. Uh, destruction you know going into slavery just doing doing nothing but coming re, uh, back reincarnation after reincarnation of suffering mm -hmm. but it ain't like it ain't the lord didn't create us to suffer forever we don't we're paying for our iniquities our sins the scriptures say i will bear the indignation of the lord because i have sinned against him so we plead my cause you know our case so now we've repented the elect the elect have come back to you by shemal shai and therefore he's hearing us we being heard what through the blood of Yahweh Shai. He covered that uh our iniquities over two thousand years ago when he laid his life down on that cross. So we can be adopted back as the sons of Yahweh once again. So now our cries are going up via the mediator. Yahweh Shai is bringing up our cries to the Father Yahweh. And he's considering our, our 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 ways, you know. Now he's looking upon us like now it's time for them to be delivered. Now it says, it says, um, and give him no rest till he established until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn, it says, to the to be meat for the enemies. It says, and the sons of strangers shall not drink thy wine for the it says for the which thou hast labored. So pretty much we're not going to be in captivity anymore. He's going to, he's going to deliver us from our enemies. Now let me get this in 2nd Ezra 15. Yeah. And there's the times that we live in it, where that, that second great deliverance is getting ready to take place. Because we've been signing and crying to the Heavenly Father to, the, uh, to deliver us. And like the, you know, Apostle Tahar deep this year, you know, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. We want the, the prophecies to come to pass so that we can hurry up and be delivered out of here. Yeah, we want we want to get the hell out, out of this place. This place is not our rest. As the scriptures say, arise ye and depart, but this is not your rest. 
what 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 does an Israelite man because if this land was built Esau built the world to cater to the woman in wickedness but what prophets the Israelite man in the devil's world this whole society is set up to break the Israelite man down mm -hmm. you know from the physical your, your strength to your mental you know low self esteem Jake walking around head down not knowing that you're a prince of the power yep. you know you you the heavenly father's chosen you know so that's why we the biggest fear we're the biggest threats to Esau's empire the elect being risen back up to who we are as a people that's why I tell you in Revelations 11 that that great fear fell upon them because they now we're not um, being bound by Esau's uh, lies, you know, that we we just a nobody people. We are we are the somebodies. We're the, we're the princes of the power, the Israelites. And that's the biggest fear because once we come back to serving our power, like the scriptures tell you in Judah, the fifth chapter, the power that hate of iniquity will be with us and we, we're unstoppable, we're undefeatable, you know? So it says, 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Yeah, and that's what you see going on now pretty much. The plagues is, are hidden of America and the rest of the world really are because wickedness has been pol exceedingly polluted the whole earth and it's just getting out of control at this point, you know? Now it says for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and why is wickedness out of control? Because the wicked man is in power. Esau Edom, the so-called white man, his ways are being spread throughout the earth. Mm -hmm. It says, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So eventually the works that Esau is committing on the earth, they're going to be fulfilled. The hurtful works are going to be fulfilled. And after they be fulfilled, that's when the judgment comes. You know, the scriptures say he has appointed a boundary that he cannot pass. Yep. Job 14 and 5. So once he hits that cap, which he's approaching that cap very or soon, soon, once he reaches that fulfillment of his wickedness, that's when the Mosiah brings the judgment. And that final judgment is that thermonuclear missiles and the sun, Yahweh Shai returning to bring forth um, judgment to uh, Esau and the deliverance to the elect. Mm -hmm. It says, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them and those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Yeah, so the Lord ain't going to be letting all that, letting it go on any longer, pretty much. You know, the Lord fed up with it just like we are. Yeah. And the time, like the brother said, you have that, your, the appointed time, the bounds that you can't pass. Hey, the Lord, the Lord already has been established and you're already right there. So that judgment is on the way. It's coming. It's just that the Heavenly Father is bound by his word. He's bound by his prophecies. Yep. So he set up a certain thing, uh, prophecies that take place and it has to play out, you know. Because Mosai would have been took Esau out, but it's just that things have to happen. Play mm -hmm. play his course. Now it says, it says, I will hold my tongue no more touching their wickedness which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in, in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Now here's the point. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Yeah, and, and the innocent blood and, and the souls of the just do cry continually to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's why you see things go, speeding up and happening now, you know? Because uh, the Lord, he, he's not here to, he's not coming back to deliver all of our people. It's only about the elect on this time, Yeah, you know? So just like in ancient Egypt, he had to, he delivered the whole entire nation. But then the nation was so wicked, he had the nation wandering around the wilderness for 40 years till that generation died off. And the only um, people that were uh, able to enter into the promised land were Joshua and Caleb, you mm -hmm. know. So, at, but Moses, even Moses didn't get to, um, get um, to enter into the promised land. Eventually, he came back and reincarnated in the, in the land because the scriptures say we come back every third and fourth generation. But he didn't physically get to see it in that in that um, in incarnation as Moses, you know, because Moses had um, got proud against the heavenly Father and didn't give him the glory, you know, for certain um, miracles. So the Heavenly Father had it to where he didn't get to see the promised land in that life. But eventually he did. But the whole thing is, the Most High didn't save all Israel. Uh, 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 it's not going to save all Israel in this, in this time. It's only about the elect, you know. So it's not going to be everybody get delivered. Only the, only the 144,000 and the one-third are going to be delivered on this side. Now it says... And therefore, 2 Ezra 15 and 9, And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from, from among them. Mm -hmm. And 
And that's what's getting ready to happen. Just like the Lord, he avenged us when we came out of Egypt, delivered us and then destroyed Egypt. Same thing getting ready to happen again. Yeah, the Lord is about to bring a great deliverance to the elect a great, and a great slaughter to the um, to the uh, enemy, Esau, Edom. Yeah. Matter of fact, let me bring this up, the next chapter. Uh, jump back to Isaiah. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in its apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I to speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Yeah, die, he, the reason his garments is dies from all the, all the blood, you know, because the Lord, he ain't coming back here like the Christians like to tell everyone, or uh, open arms, welcoming everyone. No, the Lord coming back here to judge. He's, you com know? he's coming back with vengeance. Because over 2,000 years ago, he was, what, put on the cross? Mm -hmm. You know, his people rejected him. The Romans uh, crucified him. Yeah, pierced him. Pierced him. So in the scriptures, it tells you that one day to the Lord is a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is one day. So in the mind of Yahweh, it's been two days ago. So he's pissed. The scriptures say the day of vengeance burneth in his heart. I believe it's in the same chapter. So he's ready to come back and deliver the elect and set them up as the rightful rulers of the earth. The elect being joint heirs with them, Romans the 8th chapter, mm -hmm. and we're putting the enemy, because the number one nation that uh, uh, Yahweh Shah is coming for is e Esau Edom, the so-called white men, the enemies of the Lord, the enemies of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. Like uh, Ezra, the prophet Ezra, seen um, with Second Ezra chapter thirteen, he seen that Yahweh Shai was um, um, coming with that great fathership, and he said he pretty much he was like him, him alone, you know. Even though we know he's coming back with the um, the uh, all the holy host of heaven, all the angels, but you know he's pretty much the t king of kings and the lord of lords, so. Let me read that again. It says, I have tried in the rhyme, pr rhyme press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain on my raiment. It says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Yeah, the day of vengeance is in his heart. So it ain't a day where it's going to be a good thing for everyone like like i said a second ago that's what they the christians like to teach everyone that it's going to be a good thing when he come back to so-called deliver everyone in their mind but really it's a, a day of vengeance for you i because now he finally getting his vengeance he yeah, says for the day of vengeance is in his heart and his mind and the year of my redeemed is come and in the year he redeems the elect the mm -hmm. savior so that's that's the balance of the lord showing you that the heavenly father is a power of balance on one end, Yahweh Shah is bringing what the destruction of Esau, Edom, yep. and on another end, he's bringing the deliverance of the elect, the hundred and forty-four thousand and the one-third. Just as in the ancient times, Yahweh, the heavenly Father, brought forth what the downfall of Pharaoh and the deliverance of the, of the children of Israel. So it's just the same story, but just uh, in a whole new cycle. You know, here we are, the children of Israel, thousands of years later, here right here in America, crawled. Call, um, crying unto the Lord and that great deliverance is coming it says for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come and I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold it says therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me it says and I would tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth. So it's going to come a time where the Heavenly Father, Son, Yahweh Shai is going to be here and he's going to bring the will of the Father on the earth because when Yahweh Shai gets to the earth, that's really, you have to look at look at that as that's the presence of the Most High Yahweh, a presence being um, brought forth to the earth through his Son, Yahweh Shai. So when Yahweh Shai returns, it's as if the Most High is on the earth, you know? That's the type of power Yahweh Shah is coming with, the power and the glory, with all the hosts of heaven and the holy angels. I'll get ended off with this one, one quick scripture. Isaiah 50 and 15, or Psalms 50 and 15. Let me get that real quick. Yeah. Psalms chapter 50. Psalms 50. Verse 15, 
it says so I start at 14 songs 50 and 14 offering to the most high, most high thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the most high and call upon me in a day of trouble it says I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me so that's straight to the point call upon me the heavenly father Yahweh Bashmau Shai said to the elect call upon him because we know the dead trouble is coming we spoke about that when we started the lesson I with the year, hopeful year of Jacob's trouble it's going to be a time where Jacob is going to be troubled the Israelites Esau Edom is going to come down with wrath so we're going to need divine intervention and protection in that day and our protection is what uh, Yahweh Bashmau Shai the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth into it and is safe and it starts off with the faith. You got to believe that the Most High is with us, you know? So he gave us one task to do. He said, like we've been getting into this whole lesson, what are we to do as the Israelites, starting with the elect? Isaiah, I mean, Psalms 50 and 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Yes, sir. You got it out. <clears throat> and the Lord going to deliver us. And ultimately, the Lord going to be glorified. You know, this is all to, to glorify him at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That great deliverance and everything happening the way that it that it has it is happening, it's because it's going to ultimately glorify him. Yeah. Us being end up being the actual chosen people, being delivered, and then everyone realizing that we were the whole time we were the chosen of Yah by Shimia Yep. Wisdom of Solomon the Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. They they're gonna be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation, standing up for all. Looking at like these these people are the, are the chosen people of the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, the people that are downtrodden, the people that are looked at as nobodies, are the people of the Heavenly Father, the Israelites. And the Lord has a chosen out of that chosen, which are the elect, the hundred and forty-four thousand, and the one third, which are what the first spirits that He created in the creation. Everything has an order to the to the creation. The very first spirit He created was His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. That's the first spirit he created. And after Yahweh was created, he used, through Yahweh he created what? The elect. The 144,000, 12,000 men out of each tribe, which are the, those 12,000 men are the first spirits created of their family line. So they are the start of the, their, their um, tribes. 12,000 of Judah, 12,000 of Benjamin, 12,000 of Levi, 12,000 of Ephraim, all the way down to Ishakar. Those are the, those are the, um, the first fruits of the spirit, the foundation of, of, of the creation. Which, you know, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. They came down to this third dimension with Yahweh Shai in the chariots and used the blueprint that the Heavenly Father gave them to what? To create life. Was that Genesis? In the beginning, the powers created the heavens and the earth. So this thing is deep. If we are indeed of that number, the elect, we had a part in life itself. It's just that we don't have no remembrance of the form of things. So when Yahweh Shai comes back on the earth, everything is just going to be brought right back full circle to the Heavenly Father's elect. And through the seed of the elect, because you got that doctrine going out now, these you got uh, new new um, niggas popping up saying that um, the two thirds are not going to be in, uh, in the kingdom; they're going to be done away with, which is complete bullshit. It's all types of scriptures that tell you that there's an elect, but there's an elect of the elect, and that's talking about the um, the one the one third, the hundred and forty four thousand, and the one third. They're going to bring back the two thirds through the through, through the um, through the seed, you know. So to tell you, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one, a strong nation. So ultimately, all Israel is going to be saved. All Israel is going to receive the um, the mercy of the Lord. But it's just that the order is it starts with the foundation, which is the elect. You know, that's what it all boils down to. So Lord's will, this lesson was edifying. We just wanted to get into a few scriptures on calling upon the Lord. How, you know, we enter into the time of the Pesach, which is the new year, you know, and things are about to get heated. But the Lord is going to be with us. Just call upon the Lord, like we read, call upon Yahweh Bashmau Shai in the day of trouble, and he shall deliver you and you shall glorify him. Give it, you know, you're going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bashmau Shai. You know, glorify the Lord and his great wonders that he's done. You know, mm -hmm. you got anything? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so Lord's word, this lesson was edifying. We want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bashmau Shai, Bashmau Kwakodash. Shalom. Shalom.